All right, folks, welcome to the last lecture, uh, last material lecture in the textbook, at least. Uh, this is section eight, pivot tables and pivot charts. And since I'm in Milwaukee this week, um, this is a video lecture and hopefully should give you enough material to get through the lab exercises this week. So it's all about pivot tables, starting on page 195. And I'd like you to pay attention to sections 8.1 and 8.2, creating tables, basic manipulation, and then pivot charts. We can spend some time into 8.3 beyond the basics and tools and features, but the exam will actually be covering the first two, creating tables and pivot charts. I'm going to be using the PTV1 pivot tables file. This is located on the outdrive in the PTV folder. And if we open that up, um, we see the standard wall of data. So just like last week, we're dealing with a mechanism that allows us to deal with large data series, large data sets like this. Um, although unlike last week, we're dealing with a business analytic tool. Last week, we were dealing with the data analytics the manipulation of data and data tables. This week we're dealing with business analytics, and the difference here is that business analytics are designed to be fast, easy, and not data um, manipulation heavy. In other words, business people don't want to spend weeks and weeks to get their data. They want to spend minutes. So there's where pivot table comes in. A bit of a look on our data set here. We have columns A through O. Each of the fields has a specific name, so order ID and customer ID and employee, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a total of 830 rows in our data. So these numbers will become significant as we, as we go through the table. So 830 rows of data, and each one contains the same row or the same order of fields. So we're dealing with a basic database table here, although we're doing it in Excel. Okay. So in order to create um, a pivot table, we go to the Insert menu and look at the Pivot Table button up here. This is on the top left of your screen. And the Pivot Table button I can also pull down to show me a pivot chart, although I'll need a pivot table to make a pivot chart, so I'm just going to go directly from here. Notice that I'm not selecting the whole table, I'm just randomly selecting a cell somewhere in here and then saying give me a pivot table. It's going to automatically, intelligently expand the data so that it grabs all of the data we hear. And here's where I'm talking about being significant, 831 rows. We want to make sure that it's grabbed all of the table. So a quick look at your data um, saves you a little bit of time in case we've missed something. So I'm going from A1 to O831 on the list page or the list worksheet. And I'm just going to create my pivot table on a new worksheet. I'm going to click on OK. What I'm looking at here is the first part of a pivot table. That in so you can see it. The pivot table itself is going to be built over here, and it's generally going to be placed a little bit lower than the top of the worksheet because we're going to put a filter up in here to make it show just the stuff we want to deal with. Over here on the left, or sorry, on the right, we're dealing with the pivot table field list. Now here is a list of all of those fields that were in our data table, and each one is selectable. I can put that into my table simply by clicking on it or clicking on the box or by dragging it into the requisite construction box. And the four boxes down here represent the four items or the four orders of pivot table um, filtering. The first part here is the report filter, the overall selection filter for your data. Now, if you leave this blank, you're going to be showing or summarizing all of your data. Although, if you wanted to just, say, use customer country up in there and just show Canada, then you get a selection that allows you to choose just the Canadian records or just the Denmark. German record. So initially the report filter gives you the first selection. I'm going to take that back off again um, to get the pivot table list back so we can actually see how the other ones are. Row labels and column labels indicate the category that we'd like to um, organize our, our data into. Now consider these as grouping. So a row label is the group that we're going to create. A case in point, if I take employee and drag him down into the row label, then you'll see that I create a group for each of the individual employees that were in that data set. Similarly, column labels are the series of data. So right now, this will show Buchanan's metrics all together. And if I use a metric such as the order amount and put that down into values, 
I quickly get a sum of all of the orders that individual dead people have made in Buchanan and Callahan and Devolio and forward. This is showing me all of them. If I want to break this into the series or break this into some series, I can do that. All I have to do is go up to, say, something like shipped via and pull the shipped by a company down into the column label. You can see that I create a series through each of those categories. So I have Buchanan's federal shipping amounts, I have his Speedy Express amounts, and I have his United Packaging amounts. I still have his grand total, so I see the 68,700 um, records here, or the total order amounts here, but I can individualize them now into the shipping methods. And I could do this on pretty much anything that has some order of, of, um, of grouping. So I could put this by the order date. If I took ship via company out and put order date in its place, you'll see that I can group that into 1996 orders, 1997, and 1998. So I can actually categorize this pretty much any way that I want to. I'm going to pull order date out of the thing, put shipping date back in there, or ship via company back in there, and have a look at what it's actually showing us. There are several important numbers to note here. So the individual numbers inside the grid make up the individual salesperson's um, series shipping value. So the federal shipping value for Buchanan is located here, and the Speedy Express number for Fuller is located here. The numbers along the bottom of the screen here are the actual totals for all of the orders in a particular series. So federal shipping's total versus Speedy Express's total and United Packaging's total. Similarly, the numbers on the far right-hand side here are the grand totals for the salesperson. So this is Buchanan's total, this is Callahan's total, and this is the Bolivian's and the number over here represents the grand total. All salespeople, all shipping methods, these are the order amount total. So with this, you can see we're getting various statistics shown on the table, and we can change what we want to show or how we'd like it to be displayed. Now, some of you are probably wondering why they call this a pivot table as opposed to just a summary. Well, the pivoting comes in the capability of changing how these numbers are actually visualized. If I take, for instance, the ship via company and I drag that into the row labels, then I have the first order sorting or first order grouping by employee, and then a second order within that employee to show the ship via. So I see Buchanan's Federal Shipping Speed Express in the packaging. This might be more relevant than showing the cross tabulation, depending on how I'd like to display my data. But you'll see the difference in how the table is laid out now. Here I have the first order of Buchanan, and indented from that, I have the three shipping if I wanted to change that, I could take employee and drag him down to the bottom. Now I have federal shipping, and underneath that I have all of the employees. In Speedy Express, and I have all of those employees. So I can pivot this around, and I can even take employees and put him up here, so that now each row represents the shipping method, and the series are the actual order employees. So there's the pivot part of a pivot table, the capability of changing the order or the organization of the table itself. And you will find that for different data sets, pivoting the table around can give you a different insight into the data that you're looking at here. But the important part about a pivot table is it should be able to answer specific questions. Just like a graph or any other type of a, of a summary chart, it should be giving you a specific answer. If it doesn't give you the answer you're looking for, then pivot it around, manipulate it a little bit, and see whether or not you can't get it to show you what you want. There is, however, something called paralysis by analysis, which simply means you can play with the pivot table so much that you'll end up just playing with the pivot table. It makes no meaningful use of the actual data within it. You can also use or also exhibit user bias. And user bias is simply when you're trying to make the pivot table show the answer you want it to show. As an example of this, if I wanted to indicate that specific years had a higher sales than the other, I could simply say, okay, let's take ship the company off there, let's take the order dates and put it on there, and you can quickly see that obviously the orders for 1997 were much more than 1996 and were much more than 1998. So I could conceivably um, answer the question that 1997 had the highest number of sales. However, I haven't shown the data in its entirety. I'm not showing the granularity that would make me, um, that would support that kind of a decision. Let me show you what I'm talking about. One of the things that you can do is change the grouping level, especially on things like date fields. Now, grouping levels right now are done by year. The dates assume that I'm picking this data and I want to summarize it into the largest grouping of dates, which is a year. 
Now, I can change that. If I right-click on that date and come down to grouping, I can decide to make a different grouping model. Right now, you'll see that this thing is grouping by years, but I could say, let's group that by quarters instead. And I'm going to leave the years in there so we make sure the quarters are within their, their specific year. I could just show quarters, but that would be equally biased. I'm going to make sure that years and quarters are both selected here and say OK. Now, hopefully, you're quickly going to notice that I've only got quarter three and quarter four for 1996, while I have quarter one through four for 1997. So with that in mind, I would expect that the 1997 sales would be roughly twice as much as half of 1986. And similarly, if you look over on the right-hand side, I've only got the first two quarters of 1998. Now, I don't even know whether or not I have full months in there. I don't know that I've got three months in quarter three here. I might only have one of them or two. So you've got to be careful about exhibiting user bias just to show or just to uh, answer the question you want to show. I'm going to take the group level back down here, go back to group and say quarters and come down to the year values. And you can see that, you know, I would expect the numbers 